So clouds are milky white because water has gone from being a vapor to being a liquid. And um, remember we talked about that there's something called um, cloud, uh, cloud condensation nuclei, CCN, which are particulates that, remember there are water-loving and water-fearing cloud condensation nuclei that actually kind of get the, the process started of condensation. Now, you figure that once con condensation has begun because the presence of cloud condensation nuclei and the fact that the relative humidity was like 100% or plus, um, once it's begun, what's going to happen is the air around it um, will become not saturated, unsaturated with regard to water vapor or water gas. And so then what happens? How do those um, little little uh, nuggets of liquid water, how do they grow large enough to actually fall from the cloud as what we call rain or precipitation in the form of snow? So there needs to be more going on than that initial nucleation process that we talked about before. And at the crux of, is this going to work for me? Okay. At the crux of um, what makes those, um, after condensation has begun, what makes it, because it has to have a certain size to actually begin falling from the cloud, um, what, <laughs> at the crux of that, basically, is there's an assortment of sizes of liquid water up there, okay? And we'll talk more about that. <laughs> there. Um, so before we talk about water falling from a cloud in the form of rain, actually I want to talk about within a cloud, um, water vapor forming, um, and water, super cold water, forming uh, um, snow, forming ice crystals because it's so cold. A lot of times we will get rain down here from a cloud that within the cloud up there it started out as snow okay so I'm going to talk about something called the Bergeron process and instead of being summer uh, this is summer 2013 I wish what we were in the middle of a snowstorm <laughs> kind of maybe maybe not um, but in order for I'm going to switch in gears a little bit in order for snow to form up there in those clouds we need something called super cooled water now you might recognize this blue underlining super cooled water as that's a link to a YouTube video and it is but I just would refer you to my miscellaneous videos for chapters four and five um, so what is super cooled water well anything in physical science that is super means that it is a little unusual so super cooled water is liquid water that is cooler than its freezing point temperature. So we know that at normal atmospheric pressure, water will freeze at 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So <laughs> up in those clouds, um, we definitely have liquid water that is remains a liquid at temperatures cooler than um, freezing point temperature. And what these videos would show you is that this phenomenon happens sometimes. You can have water stay in its liquid state. Um, and it happens in my car all the time. If in the back of my car I have a bunch of bottled water, and if that bottled water has frozen overnight, just kind of subtly, what I, what, or I should say, has seen temperatures below freezing overnight, I'll go out and it'll still be a liquid, and I'll open it up and it will solidify. That was super cooled water, okay? Um, so what are we talking about? Well, there's water in its liquid state at temperatures, like the slide says, as cold as negative 40 degrees Celsius. It would sh it, on the Celsius scale, it should freeze at, at zero degrees Celsius. So this, anything that's super, this is super cool, we have super saturated, anything that's kind of in its super state is just itching to kind of come out of it. And so actually, um, liquid water that is perturbed um, super cooled liquid water that's perturbed, like opening your bottle of super cooled water, or to having a plane run into it, um, will uh, change from its tenuous state, liquid, to its normal state, solid. So at the bottom here, this kind of reminds you that um, airplanes running through super cooled water, that that super cooled liquid water will freeze or solidify on the plane. All right, <laughs> probably more about that than you than you really wanted to know. So super cooled water is important in the process of snow, uh, formation of snowflakes, 
up there in clouds. And I'll kind of, the reason it's important is that, remember we talked about um, there is a saturation, um, there's a saturation amount, 100% um, relative humidity, the amount of water vapor that can be at a particular temperature. Okay, so saturations amount. That first column says, okay, what if we have water gas, water vapor, um, and it's at zero, negative five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20 degrees Celsius. That's pretty darn cool. The air is saturated with regard to um, water vapor being and, and, and liquid water. Well, notice that with regard to um, water vapor and solid ice, that actually the air is super saturated. So this is to say that if you can go ahead and, let's see, ice, well, I'll show you in a minute, but the Bergeron process is basically that solid ice crystals will grow at the expense of super cold water. Okay, bottom line. And on your test, on your unit two exam, I think I only, um, I haven't asked you details about the formation of snow in the, the clouds, uh, but I have asked you for the name, and the Bergeron process is, is the, the name that we associate with the formation of snow. Okay, so basically picture an ice crystal, solid water, falling through super cooled water, okay, um, and that air is saturated with water vapor, water gas, okay, um, with regard to the super cooled water. And with regard to the solid ice, the solid ice is even itching more. It's even more super, it's super saturated with regard to that solid, falling solid ice crystal. Those water vapor particles forming onto that solid ice. Okay. Ah, it's hard to explain. So super cooled is water that is at a, a liquid water, water that's in its liquid state at a temperature cooler than uh, freezing. Super saturated air is basically air that has more water vapor than should be present um, at that particular temperature. So I'm going to show you uh, a series of um, little figures here. So watch carefully. This is like, this is time zero, then time one, time two, Time one. This is A, B, and C. This is going through time. So watch this ice crystal falling through. And I don't know if you can make it out, but there's these little Mickey Mouse looking things. And remember, those are H2O molecules. So the red thing is the oxygen, and the white things are the two hydrogens. And so that's water vapor. Notice that we have water in its liquid state. We have supercooled water. That's the blue orbs. And then we have water in its solid state. And the water vapor is going to preferentially dump onto the ice crystal. Okay. So now we go to the second little figure here. And notice that the ice crystal is getting larger. <coughs> Excuse me. And as the water um, vapor, that's the independent water molecules, are removed from the, uh, the cloud, the environment, notice that that water vapor is replenished by the super cool liquid water. Okay, because those little orbs are getting smaller. Okay, there you go. So in this third figure down here, we see this beautiful six-sided, eh, sometimes a test question, we see this beautiful snowflake um, falling through water vapor, water gas, and notice our supercooled particles have gotten smaller. That's the Bergeron process. And um, I just think it's really refreshing, maybe, that oftentimes our spring, our spring showers um, start out basically in the cloud above is this process, this Bergeron process. Okay, it's in, and what happens is we know that in the troposphere, as you get closer to the Earth's surface, what happens? It, it warms up unless there's a temperature inversion in place. So that those ice crystals get warmer and warmer and warmer at some elevation, some um, before the, they hit the ground, it, they're going to go ahead and melt. And they're going to go ahead and continue to fall then as what we call rain. So I think that's pretty cool. So here's some miscellaneous things <coughs> about, um, about the, the process then um, of snow. Let's see. Uh, sometimes the crystals break. And then they can go ahead to serve as new independent snowflakes. 
Sometimes you get blobs of snowflakes together. They kind of, what we call that accretion as they fall. Um, and I have a slide coming up to kind of show you that the temperatures at which this whole Bergeron process is occurring actually will give you different types of crystals, snow crystals. And I would imagine it's a science in and of itself. Um, so the next part, uh, uh, next video, I'm going to talk about the fact that what we get here at ground level, level, whether it's snow or whether it's rain or whether it's freezing rain or sleet, actually then kind of depend upon what the temperature is after it falls from, from the cloud.